The electrical properties of semiconductors were first observed in the 19th century when Michael Faraday discovered that silver sulfide's conductivity increased with temperature, unlike metals. This foundational understanding led to significant advancements in the 20th century. In 1947, John Bardeen and Walter Britton at Bell Labs developed the first point contact transistor using germanium, marking the birth of modern semiconductor electronics. A year later, in 1948, William Shockley invented the junction transistor, which offered better performance and reliability, becoming the basis for modern transistors. The late 1950s saw further innovation with the development of the first integrated circuits, combining multiple transistors and other components on a single semiconductor substrate, leading to miniaturization and increased complexity in electronic devices. Silicone emerged as the material of choice for semiconductors due to its abundance, cost-effectiveness, and superior electrical properties. Basics of Semiconductors Semiconductors are materials that have electrical conductivity between that of conductors like metals and insulators like glass. As a refresher, electricity is the flow of electrons and conductors have very low electrical resistance, meaning the electrons can move freely within the materials such as copper and aluminum. Insulators have very high electrical resistance where electrons are tightly bound to their atoms and cannot move freely such as in glass and rubber. Semiconductors properties are made possible via a band structure that is intrinsic to the design of them. In semiconductors, the electrons are divided into these bands. The valence band is filled with electrons while the conduction band is typically empty. The energy gap between these bands is known as the band gap. In the valence band, electrons are bound to atoms, but when they gain enough energy, for example from thermal excitation, they can jump to the conduction band, leaving behind a vacancy or hole. These holes act as positive charge carriers. In the valence band, the movement of electrons filling these holes creates the appearance of hole movement in the opposite direction. This movement of holes can also contribute to electrical current. Although electrons themselves do not flow freely in the valence band, the movement of holes, which is the result of electron movements in the valence band, contributes to the electrical current. Once an electron has made the jump to the conduction band, it is free to move throughout the semiconductor material under the influence of an electric field contributing to the electric current. This movement is what we typically refer to as electrical conduction in semiconductors. Semiconductors have a smaller band gap than insulators but larger than conductors. This band gap is the energy difference between the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band. The size of the band gap determines the electrical properties of the material by influencing how easily electrons can be excited from the valence band to the conduction band, and thus how well the material can conduct electricity. Categories of semiconductors and the doping process. There are two main categories of semiconductors, intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors. Intrinsic semiconductors are pure semiconductors without any impurities. At absolute zero, they behave like insulators because the electrons are bound within the valence band. As temperature increases, some electrons gain enough energy to jump to the conduction band, allowing current to flow. Extrinsic semiconductors are doped with impurities to improve their electrical properties. Doping is the process of adding small amounts of impurity atoms to a pure semiconductor material like silicone, to change its electrical properties. It introduces additional charge carriers, i.e. increased electrical movement, and depending on what elements are chosen, it creates p-type and n-type semiconductors. p-type semiconductors are doped with elements from group 13, also known as 3A, of the periodic table such as boron B, aluminum Al, or gallium Ga. These elements have three valence electrons, one less than silicone, which has four. This creates a hole or absence of an electron in the valence band, which acts as a positive charge carrier. Electrons from neighboring silicon atoms can move to fill this hole, effectively allowing the hole to move through the material and contribute to electrical conductivity. In p-type semiconductors, holes are the majority carriers moving through the valence band as electrons fill these holes. N-type semiconductors are doped with elements from group 15, also known as 5A, of the periodic table such as phosphorus P, arsenic AS, or antimony SB. These elements have 5 valence electrons, one more than silicon. The extra electron becomes a free carrier, increasing the material's conductivity by providing more electrons in the conduction band. In n-type semiconductors, free electrons are the majority carriers moving through the conduction band. Creation of p-n junctions. When p-type and n-type materials are joined, they form a p-n junction, essential for the operation of modern electronic circuits. The junction allows current to flow easily in one direction, forward bias, and blocks it in the other, reverse bias. At the junction, the extra electrons from the n-type region diffuse into the p-type region and recombine with holes, while the holes from the p-type region diffuse into the n-type region and recombine with electrons, effectively canceling the doping out. This diffusion results in a depletion region around the junction where there are no positive charge carriers from holes p-type or negative charge carriers from extra electrons n-type. 
This creates charged ions such as boron minus in the p-type region and phosphorus plus in the n-type region. The separation of these fixed charges creates an electric field that opposes further diffusion of electrons and holes. When a forward bias, positive voltage applied to the p-type side, is applied, the electric field at the junction is reduced, allowing charge carriers to cross the junction and conduct current. Think of it as positive voltage coaxes the negatively charged electrons out of the holes, allowing for the reintroduction of the movement of those holes. Conversely, when a reverse bias, positive voltage applied to the n-type side is applied, the electrical field at the junction is increased, preventing charge carriers from crossing the junction and thereby blocking current flow. This property of allowing current to flow primarily in one direction makes the PN junction essential for diodes, transistors, and many other semiconductor devices. Manufacturing of Semiconductor Devices The manufacturing of semiconductor devices is a complex and highly precise process. It transforms raw semiconductor materials into functional electronic components. It starts first with wafer preparation and ends with the assembly and packaging. Throughout the process, contamination controls of the materials, equipment, and processes is extremely regulated. To get a clearer picture of the cleanliness, an advanced semiconductor clean room is greater than 32,000 times cleaner than a surgical operating room. This is due to contaminants leading to defects in the semiconductor wafers, resulting in lower yields, reduced reliability, and increased costs. For example, a single particle of dust on a wafer can ruin an entire batch of microchips. Moreover, as semiconductor devices continue to shrink in size with advanced technologies like nanometer scale transistors, the sensitivity to contamination increases, making effective clean room practices even more crucial. Here's the semiconductor fabrication process. It starts with wafer preparation, in which high purity silicone is melted and formed into a single crystal ingot called silicone ingot growth. This ingot is then sliced into thin wafers. The sliced wafers are polished to a mirror-like finish to provide a smooth surface for subsequent processing. Next is oxidation, in which a layer of silicon dioxide, SiO2, is grown on the wafer's surface by exposing it to oxygen or steam. This layer acts as an insulating layer and a mask for later processes. The wafer then transitions to photolithography, which is a process of transferring a pattern from a photo mask to the wafer using UV light. First, the wafer is coated with a light-sensitive photoresist material. Next, a photo mask, which contains a circuit pattern, is aligned over the wafer, which is then exposed to ultraviolet UV light. The light passing through the mask alters the photoresist, creating a pattern. The wafer is then developed to remove either the exposed or unexposed photoresist, depending on whether a positive or negative photoresist is used. This step transfers the pattern from the mask to the wafer. Now that there is a pattern on the wafer, etching removes material from the wafer from that desired pattern. Dry etching uses plasma to achieve high precision, while wet etching uses liquid chemicals and is generally less precise but effective for certain applications. Next is ion implantation, which embeds dopant atoms into the silicone wafer by accelerating ions and directing them at the wafer, embedding them into the silicone lattice. This modifies the electrical properties of specific regions, creating p-type and n-type properties. After implementation, the wafer is annealed, heated, to repair damage to the crystal structure and activate the dopants. Next is deposition. Deposition creates thin films essential for building the insulating layer, conductive paths, and active regions of electronic devices. These films enable electrical isolation, signal routing, and the formation of crucial structures like transistors. Additionally, deposition provides protective and optical coatings to enhance device reliability and performance. Deposition is achieved through various processes. Chemical vapor deposition, CVD, involves depositing thin films of materials onto the wafer's surface and is used to create layers such as silicon nitride or silicon dioxide. Physical vapor deposition, PVD, uses techniques like sputtering or evaporation to deposit thin metal films onto the wafer. After deposition is planarization, which involves smoothing and flattening the surface of the wafer. This step is essential to ensure that subsequent layers of materials can be deposited evenly, which is critical for the performance and reliability of semiconductor devices. Once planarization is complete, metallization begins. Metallization deposits metal layers to form electrical connections. Techniques like CVD, PVD, and electroplating are used to deposit metals like aluminum or copper. Furthermore, the photolithography and etching pattern these metal layers to create circuit connections. After all the layers and patterns are created, individual chips are tested for functionality. The wafer is then diced into individual chips which are mounted on a substrate and enclosed in a protective package. Semiconductor Components and Their Functions Semiconductor components are the building blocks of modern electronic devices with key components including diodes, transistors, both bipolar junction transistors, BJTs, and field effect transistors, FETs. 
and integrated circuits, ICs. Each of these components have specific functions and applications in electronics. Diodes allow current to flow in one direction only, acting as a one-way valve for electric current. Rectifier diodes are used in power supplies to convert AC alternating current to DC direct current. For example, in a power adapter, rectifier diodes convert the incoming AC from the wall outlet into DC used to charge a phone or laptop's battery. Zener diodes are used for voltage regulation and protection, maintaining a stable output voltage in voltage regulator circuits despite variations in input voltage. Light emitting diodes, LEDs, emit light when current flows through them and are commonly used in TV screens, indicators, and light bulbs. Transistors are semiconductor devices used to amplify or switch electronic signals with two main types, bipolar junction transistors, BJTs, and field effect transistors, FETs. BJTs amplify current and consist of three regions, the emitter, base, and collector. Small changes in the base current control larger changes in the collector current. There are two main types of BJTs. NPN transistors, where current flows from the collector to the emitter when one positive voltage is applied to the base, and PNP transistors, where current flows from the emitter to the collector when a negative voltage is applied to the base. BJTs are commonly used in audio amplifiers to amplify weak audio signals to drive speakers, such as enabling weak signals from microphones to drive loudspeakers, and in microcontrols to switch on and off various functions like LEDs. Field effect transistors, FETs, control the flow of current using an electric field and have three terminals, source, drain, and gate. The gate voltage controls the current flow between the source and the drain. There are two main types of FETs, junction FETs, JFETs, and metal oxide semiconductor FETs, MOSFETs. In JFETs, the voltage applied to the gate controls the current flow through the channel, and they are used in low-noise amplifiers for sensitive electronic equipment like radio receivers. MOSFETs, the most common type of FET, are used in both analog and digital circuits, such as power management circuits and laptops to regulate the power supplied to different components. Integrated circuits ICs are miniaturized electronic circuits that integrate multiple semiconductor devices such as transistors, diodes, capacitors, and resistors on a single chip. They perform various functions from simple logic operations to complex processing tasks. Analog ICs are used for signal processing tasks such as amplification and audio equipment where they amplify sound signals. Digital ICs are used in computers and other digital systems for processing and storing data. For example, microprocessors and memory chips are forms of digital ICs in computers that perform calculations, execute programs, and store data. Lastly, mixed signal ICs combine analog and digital functions on a single chip and are used in smartphones to manage both the processing of digital data and the handling of analog signals like audio and radio frequencies. Applications of semiconductors and their impact. Let's delve into some real world applications of semiconductors and their impact. One of their most significant impacts has been on computers. They play key roles in central processing units, CPUs, which are built using millions of transistors on semiconductor chips. These transistors switch on and off rapidly to perform calculations and execute instructions. Semiconductors are also used in RAM, random access memory, and ROM, read-only memory chips, which store data and instructions for quick access by the CPU. Additionally, graphics processing units, GPUs, essential for rendering images and video, rely on semiconductor technology for fast and efficient processing. The biggest impact of semiconductors has been on speed, efficiency, and miniaturization. These advances have led to faster, more efficient processors, enabling high-speed computing and multitasking. Miniaturization has resulted in smaller, more powerful chips, allowing for the development of compact laptops, tablets, and other portable computing devices. Future Trends in Semiconductor Technology The future of semiconductor technology is marked by exciting advancements and significant challenges. As traditional silicon-based technology approaches its physical limits, researchers and engineers are exploring new materials and innovative techniques to continue the trend of miniaturization and performance improvement. One of the most promising new materials is graphene, a single layer of carbon atoms arranged in a hexagonal lattice. Graphene boasts remarkable electrical, thermal, and mechanical properties, including high electron mobility, which allows for faster electron transport compared to silicone. Potential applications include high-speed transistors, flexible electronics, and advanced sensors. Additionally, graphene's flexibility and strength make it suitable for wearable technology and other emerging fields. Advancements in Silicone Technology There have been continual advancements in silicone technology, particularly in FinFETs and GAA-FETs. 
FinFETs, thin field effect transistors, use 3D structures to control current flow, resulting in an improved performance and, and energy efficiency over traditional planar transistors. Gate all around FETs, GAA FETs, the next evolution after FinFETs, provide even better control over the channel and further reduce leakage currents, enhancing power efficiency and performance. Additionally, extreme ultraviolet lithography (EUV) is enabling the production of smaller feature sizes down to 5 nanometers and beyond. This technology is critical for continuing Moore's law, which predicts the doubling of transistors on a chip approximately every 2 to 4 years. Furthermore, it's speculated that representing ones and zeros as clockwise and counterclockwise spin of electrons may help speed the process along as well. Challenges in scaling However, there are several challenges in scaling the semiconductor process. One major challenge is quantum tunneling, a quantum mechanical phenomenon where particles pass through a potential barrier they classically shouldn't be able to cross. Electrons can tunnel through thin insulating layers, leading to leakage currents and power inefficiency. As transistors shrink to the nanometer scale, quantum tunneling becomes a significant issue. Another challenge is heat dissipation. Smaller transistors generate more heat in a smaller area, posing challenges for efficient heat dissipation. Effective thermal management solutions are required to maintain performance and reliability. Finally, there are material limitations. Finding materials that can perform reliably at nanometer scales without degrading is a major challenge. Silicone has limitations at very small scales, necessitating the exploration of new materials. Future uses of semiconductors in electronics. As semiconductor technologies continue to advance, its future applications promise to revolutionize countless industries. One significant area is artificial intelligence AI and machine learning ML. Specialized semiconductor devices such as AI accelerators and neuromorphic chips are being developed to handle the massive pattern recognition and parallel processing required of AI and ML. Another important area is the Internet of Things IoT, which refers to the network of interconnected physical devices that communicate and exchange data with each other and other systems over the Internet. Semiconductors will play a crucial role because IoT devices require low power, high performance processors and sensors to function effectively. Lastly, quantum computing represents a frontier of semiconductor technology. These devices have the potential to solve complex problems far beyond the capabilities of classical computers. Thank you for watching and I hope these explanations help. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask. And if you found value in the video, please like it, subscribe, and let people know about the channel because it really does help spread the knowledge.